We've learned a lot about abstraction so far, and in today's video, we are going to focus on another form of abstraction, that is variables. Variables are really important to stepping your programs up to be much more powerful. So what is a variable? We will do examples in just a second, but let's talk about it first. Consider a game. You can pick any game that you want. How do you know what the score is? Well, you can remember it. And over time, that might get more complicated depending on how the game is scored and how many players there are, or you could just try to write it down. In real life, that's what you would do. You'd have a piece of paper and you'd write down the score for everybody. Well, writing it down is one way of storing that variable, which is what we are about to do. As another example, let's consider a bucket. A bucket can be a form of a variable in a physical analogy. So consider you have a series of buckets. Let's call one bucket X and one bucket Y. So given those two buckets, we can put things into the buckets, and then we can refer to the bucket's name to mean what is in the bucket. So for example, let's put five things into the bucket labeled X. If we were writing this down in a programming language, we would call this x equals 5. It looks a lot like your math as well. It's just an assignment operator. And now we can do things to manipulate that bucket, to change the values in the bucket. So we could assign x to be x plus 1, and that would be just like putting one more thing into the bucket. Or we can use that bucket, that x bucket, to make new variables. So if I assign y to be x plus 5, then what's in y? So what will be in y would be whatever was in x plus 5. And since we started out with x being 5, and then we added 1 to it a minute ago, then it will be 6 plus 5, and so what will be in y would be 11. If you took algebra, this should look familiar. There are variables in algebra. You had equations that you would try to solve for the unknown, something like x equals 5 plus y, and then another equation that involved y. This is very similar. There are some differences, however. So for one thing, we're not solving a set of simultaneous equations here. Instead, we're using those variables to refer to an unknown something, what in this case we know it, and you're assigning them in order. So you can say x equals 5, y equals x plus 5, for example. So let's talk about how you do variables in SNAP and make this more clear by doing a lot of examples. OK, so we started a new program in SNAP, and we're going to make an example of how to do variables. First, we're going to navigate to the Variables tab. We've been sticking mostly over here to the motion and a little bit of control. We're moving to variables. And we're going to make a variable. You just have to click on make a variable. And you have a choice. You can make the variable available to all the sprites, or you can make it available to this sprite only. There are other programming paradigms, and they have other names for this. Usually, they'll call this global or local. They're both global variables for this, for the variable name, where it says for all sprites or for this sprite only. And it's just a matter of which sprites can actually access the value of the variable. Since I only have one sprite for right now, I'm just going to leave it at for all sprites. And I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call it count, because we're going to make an example of how many times we run into the wall. So you'll notice that when it starts, there are a couple of things that are different here. For one thing, the variable shows up in the window, and it shows you its initial value, and it always assigns it to 0 to start with. So let's make just a little quick script to count how many times we run into the wall. So when we click our flag, we are just going to go forever, run back and forth. And we could make this, if you didn't want to count, we could just move 10 steps, and if you're on the edge, bounce. And that'll just simply go back and forth. But what we really want to do is we want to count how many times we've done that, and we're going to use variables to do that. First, we need to know whether or not we ran into it. So instead of using this if on the edge, bounce, well, we can leave that there. We're going to say if you're touching, the edge, and we're going to change. And change lets you set the value of a variable. And it has a little drop-down menu that gives you all the variables that you can touch at that moment. We can change count by 1. And now you can see that every time it touches the wall, it increments. So that was one quick example of how to use variables. One other point I want to make about variables is that variables have types. And so in this case, the variable was an integer. That is just a count, a whole number count over here. Let's do another variable, another way that you can actually tie sensing and variables together. So I'm going to make another variable. I'm going to call this one name. And I'm going to go over to the sensing tab, and I'm going to say, what's your name? That's the default little thing. You can ask anything. And then I'm going to show you how you can get the answer from the user. So you can say set name, 
And then in the Sensing tab, there's a little circle here, which we haven't used before, and you can drag that. It's called Answer. And so now you set the name to the answer. And I can just click on this, and it'll say, what's your name? And I'll say, Dr. McGovern. And you see it sets the variable to Dr. McGovern. And then you can do things with it after that if you want. So for example, we could have the little sprite say back to us something like, hello. But we wanted to actually use the variable we just did. And so we need to go to the Operators tab, which we are going to talk about in a different video. But very, very briefly, we're just going to want it to say two words. So I'm going to have it say hello and then the name that we just asked for. So I'm going to go to the Variables tab and show you that you can drag this circle into places like that. So say hello and name. So if I click on that and I say my name is Dr. McGovern again, it'll say hello Dr. McGovern. So let's do one other fun example. Let's make an example where we have two sprites and we have the variable available in only one sprite and we'll also do an example of what a script variable is. So I'm going to make a second sprite. There it is. It just creates it in a new location and with a new random color. We're going to make this sprite run around the world randomly and then it's going to count how many times it hits the other sprite instead of counting how many times it's going to hit the wall. And then we're going to let the other sprite just run back and forth between the walls. So in this case, I'm going to make a variable, but I'm going to make it for this sprite only. I'm going to call it blue hits since it's a little blue sprite. And you'll see that over here in the window it says sprite 2 blue hits to show you that that variable is only available to the sprite 2. We're going to have it. Let's see, the other one moves when we hit the flag, so we're going to have this one move when it hits the flag. And instead of looking for the wall, we're going to look and say, is it hitting the other sprite? If it is touching sprite, then it will change its count, change blue hits. You might think that's enough, but we haven't told this thing to actually move. And what we really wanted to do is we wanted to move sort of randomly around the world and to bounce off the edges and to not be totally crazy. So I wanted to move in a reasonable direction. I'm going to add a few more bits of control. Well, first let's add some moving. We're going to pick something fun. We're in a point in a random direction. We haven't talked about random before. So I'm going to pick a direction and I'm going to just pick a random number that means any number and the computer chooses it between 1 and, 100, 1 and 180. I'm going to have the sprite move and then it counts if it's touching the other sprite but the other thing we needed to do is look and see if it's running off the wall. And if it's running into the wall, so if it's touching the edge, instead of bouncing or counting anything else, we're actually just going to give it a new random heading. So we'll grab another random number. OK, let's see what this does. There's a bit of a problem, huh? We forgot a few things. For one, let's start in the middle. For another, we looked at our directions. And if you go over here and you look at your directions, 180 means pointing down, 0 means up. So we're always pointing to the right. That isn't necessarily what we want. Let's actually try something slightly different. Let's first just say, if we touch the edge, we're just going to turn around. Our sprite still went off the screen. I wonder what's wrong. Let's look over here. We have an odd problem. Our little if statement is actually inside the other if. And that's what's wrong, is it was only checking if it was touching the edge, if it was touching the other sprite, which never happened, of course. So let's start that over again. There we go. Now, let's add something that's a little bit more interesting into that and have the blue sprite actually be a little bit more random. So after it turns around, 
we're going to let it, for example, just turn a random amount if it touches the other sprite. Let's call it, let's do that when it just touches the other sprite. And we're only turning it just a little bit. So some random number between 1 and, let's call it 20. Let's try that. Of course, it has to actually, there we go. See, when it touches it, it's going off in random directions. Okay. Okay, so let's do one more thing to this example, and that is just show how we can use script variables, which are variables that are visible only inside the script. So on the little blue sprite, which is the one we're still in, I'm going to make a variable. And instead of picking a random direction, I'm actually going to make a variable called direction. And you'll notice that it does not show up over here because it's only visible inside this script and only at this location. Anything below this, it's not going to be visible above it. So to demonstrate that, if I just try to move this up here and I try to run it, it gives you an error. See, it said a variable direction does not exist in this context. So let's get rid of it. And let's just show how we're going to use direction. So we're going to set direction. It still shows up in the list of things to set. And we're going to set the direction to that picking the random number. And then instead of pointing in direction 90, we're going to point in the direction of the variable direction. And this should do the exact same thing it was doing. There you go. That's it for variables for right now. We will have another video on operators, which combined with variables will really make variables much more powerful. Go experiment with variables and have some fun.